my god okay cool guys the purpose of this video is just to educate some of you on how moroccans grow up in their yards but on that note let's get into the intro <laughs> Welcome back to the YouTube channel, guys. So today, I'm going to run you through the bits and bobs that you see in a Moroccan household and things you do growing up in one. So let's start with the most favourite place of my life, the kitchen. Now, I love the kitchen. Now, if you're of a Moroccan, you always have these, you know, this is for your coffee, or as we call it, Maghrib, Ahwa. You know, you have these birds and this particular one that's covered in plastic here. Yeah? Mum, I know you're watching my videos. You know full well this one has never come out of the house in the last five years. Everyone has these. These blue ones. I don't even need to show you the pictures of what they look like. But they'll pop up on the screen in terms of what a picture look like. But these plates are a staple in every Moroccan household. This plate as well. This is probably what you chuck couscous on, innit? Um, or like... Tajin, like when you're not using a clay pot, this is what you like cook a tajin in and then just whip out from the clay pot into here. It's kind of nice, but I like the design and kind of trippy though. Kind of very trippy. Ah, yes. I also need to show you more of the living room. For the ones who have been to my house, you know what the furniture looks like. For the ones who have not been to my house, I will show you roughly what the furniture looks like in a Moroccan household. Yeah, guys, this is the Moroccan furniture that you see in most yards. You know, this big oblong, no octagon size table you get the mini ones one and two mum's left her a notebook don't know why um you also get color coordinated furniture to match as well now let me just tell you guys something you see see these things here yeah these little you probably have the most uncomfortable sleep of your life on one of these that's me being dead honest and i've done it multiple times not just here but back home in morocco my grandma's house so yeah now, if you're also Moroccan, you will understand the significance of this thing and this thing. I don't know why they have glasses in there. The fact that we never use them still baffles me. And I don't know if you've got one of these in your house in Morocco or like in England, but you see these little like chairs here, yeah? These things, they look nice, but they're not comfortable to sit on. That's me being honest. That's me being genuinely honest, like 100% honest with my mom. Um, but yeah, man, aside from the furniture, let's get into things that happen when you're Moroccan and like things we use. So, okay, cool guys. Let's now delve into the things Moroccans do have and things we've experienced growing up. So I'd say the first most important thing is the clothing we wear. Okay. So the first thing we wear, um, thing that usually pops up on the screen now is what the mandem wear. So you've got the trace, you're going to have two of these, you're going to see two. Uh, it's either going to be a Jabador, or it's either going to be a Kandora or a Jalaba. Um, it's just literally a, a, a hand-woven cloth, a material type thing. It's like a gown, like mandem wear, uh, on top of like, let's say, the, let's say they're going out and then, I don't know why my finger's cut. Um, a Jalaba is like a... It's like a robe made out of like very fine cloth, very like expect good quality cloth depending on who your tailor is. Some of you men have dead jalebas, but moving on. <laughs> and Jabador is more like artisan styled, like Moroccan cultural things that my guys used to wear on, usually wear on Eid. Um, if we don't wear a, a nice uh, kandora, uh, Jabador is like the half, it's half, it comes in two. So it's like there's trousers as well, but the picture that you've seen only shows the top half. And this is something that I'm looking to get my own versions of versions of purely because it's banging and um yeah that's that's pretty much it really for that next thing we're going to talk about what the man them wear uh, uh listen long story short i don't even it's not just man them i think some women wear this as well like because they got women's colors as well um the bulga yeah it's literally just a moroccan sandal made out of cow skin or camel skin or whatever kind of animal that has skin that they can mold the leather into my old, I don't know, they, they don't use plastic over there. But um, <laughs> um, it's literally it's a handmade sandal. Um, these, back in Morocco, you don't really care because you just bop out with your feet, you just slap on the bulha. Don't, you don't care if no one sees your crusty heels or anything like that. So you just move on and just... <laughs> All right, cool. Let's now move on to what the ladies wear. Now, to be honest, they have their own versions of like kandoras as well. Like, 
their candolas are a little bit different but they also got something called a taqsheta which is a hand designed I don't know if it's it's not I don't know if it's silk or if it's a different material like cotton or like wool or whatever it is. But it's like these very colourful dresses that you've seen in the image here. Um this like listen, the right person, yeah, for all you single man them like myself, the right woman wears this, you're gonna tell your mum. She's the one. Trust me, she's the one. <laughs> are like oof whoa I don't know why man they're just paying I, I like them I like them on the right person in it I don't know who the right person is but if you ever see the like if you ever see like a good looking female for the man them if you ever see a good looking female wearing a peng tukshita oh! <laughs> oh my days oh my god you're gonna be head over heels that's because I've experienced that once upon a time growing up but moving on Okay, now that I've talking about some of the things that Moroccan men and women wear, I would also now delve into some of the foods we eat. So we have couscous, you know, tajin, rghayef, or msimmin, uh, you know, uh, or milwe. For, for those who know what milwe is, milwe uh, is like a, it's like a type of bread, but it like breaks apart quite easily. Um, rghayef or msimmin, depending on what part of Morocco you're from, it's like a Moroccan pancake, and it's um, it's fried, it's fried, it's fried on both sides. It's made out of dough, obviously, with banging. Um, what else? What else do we have with me growing up? Erte, we have lots of erte. The birreds, so like the pots, the teapots that you saw earlier, for you uncultured swine. Um, <laughs> we call it a bread, yeah. So it's a bread of ete. So a bread is usually filled up with ete, and then obviously you have a you have another bread, the kawa, the the tall one. Um, usually you can have black coffee or just have coffee mixed into it as well. But ete is a staple in every single Moroccan household. Like culturally, Moroccans tend to have couscous on Fridays, but in my house, I don't know when the last time we had couscous was. Probably wasn't my grandma was here like two years ago. Bro, that's a long time ago, you know, mad. I haven't had couscous in two years. Moroccan Twitter's gonna kill me. Experiences growing up Moroccan. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Oh my, diddy diddy days. <laughs> oh crap. Um, uh, okay, cool. One of the most common experiences growing up Moroccan. You'll be with family, chilling. And then your mom asks you, why are you smiling at the phone all the time? I just, I'm just, I'm just texting a friend. I'm just, you know, laughing at a joke they sent. What are the telephone? This is when you start sweating. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie. I had my moments when I was younger. I'm not even gonna try to deny it. <laughs> Personally, believe it. Like the fear you find, you just do everything and you password lock everything. Simple. They, then they tell you, I don't password. Like, the minute you say no. <laughs> this most common phrase. Wallahi la shufti had TD phone. At that moment, you then contemplate it's running away, you know, social life, calling calling this, calling doing this, doing that. You're like, you just contemplate your social life being ruined because you can't have a phone. Uh, Go into family. You think you. Look, my West Africans, my East Africans, my ethnic minorities, uh, all my ethnic, ethnic minority people will understand this very clearly. You will go with your mum to your auntie's house. And you say hello to aunties that you've never seen before. And they be like, Oh, I remember you when you was this big. Oh, so, 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 so when you're getting married? This question, I don't get asked enough, man. I bear, okay, cool, bear in mind, I'm 23 now. And I'm not, I'm not facing the end of it. Like, obviously now I'm in the stage where like, I'm trying to sort out myself. I get my own gaff and all that stuff. And then, uh, <laughs> Oh boy, this is gonna be fun to explain. Yeah, man, I've had bare aunties try to get their daughters married to me, man. Like, not even a joke. They think, oh, I just joke with Binti. I'm like, pardon? I don't, I don't even know you, blood. Who are you? Who are you, fam? And the thing is, they think, oh, yeah, we, we want you to marry our daughter because you're a nice guy. And I'm just thinking, no, you guys just want a flipping passport and an excuse to come see us if we do get married. Like, don't get me wrong, there are some very good looking girls back in Morocco. But I'm not going through the headache to try to get a madame visa blood. I ain't gonna be your gateway to do illegal immigration. Allow it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. So yeah, like going to family is like sometimes ah uh, like you eat you eat your plate of food as well. And then the auntie will force you to eat more food. You'd be like, yo. Like you'll be like literally, you would be like 
full to the rim, yeah? You'd be chilling like that, like. Struggling for breath, of course, because you're thinking, oh, not bad. But then you're just there chilling, like, with a fat belly, yeah? And it's just like, you're just wondering. Mum, when can we go home, please? But then your mum's just looking at you. When your mum does this type of facial expressions, you look like, Boy, you better prepare to run as soon as you get back home because your mom's going to beat your backside. Yeah, she's going to whoop your backside differently. <laughs> and then they have the audacity. I don't know why the pillow is still here. Then have the audacity to say, ah, oh, eat some more. I'm feeling like a marshmallow and you want me to eat more. Are you okay? Is everything okay up here? Up here? Like, it, it's just mad, man. It's just mad. Like, I just feel like... Um, they are so stupid. Some aunties are genuinely so dumb, like when they don't see someone is, they say, obviously, they, they, they take it to heart when you don't eat their, like their food. Now, bear in mind, you've already finished your plate. If you, if you go to a Moroccan household, you don't finish your plate, big money in your debt, that, that, that's disrespectful, isn't it? But if you go to a Moroccan household, you've already finished your plate and they try to overfeed you, that's where the aunties need to like, yo, like, cultural, relax. Don't, don't do it no more. Like, pause, all right? Enough's enough, I'm, I'm done. Tired, I'm full. But on that note, that is me summing it all up. So yeah. Anyways, guys, this is the outro by yours truly. Subscribe, like, and share. Otherwise, you're a pagan. Deuces.